guys, one of the things I wanted to do was to uh, spend a little bit of time and walk you through one of the advantages of having a web API um, for the new scheduler. And that is that uh, we can build projects um, which enable us to uh, create push button control of um, uh, the scheduler. So here's a, um, it looks a little bit messy, but it's a fairly simple circuit. We have an Arduino Mega here. Uh, we have an ENC 28J60 uh, Ethernet card over here, and that's wired up to the SPI pins, which are over here in the bottom right-hand corner. And then we have uh, three push buttons over here, um, physical push buttons, which you can depress. Um, and I'm going to show you how you would go about wiring these push buttons up so that they cause the scheduler to do uh, take actions, which you can define what actions they need to be. Um, to be honest, the only part on here that's essential is the push buttons. Um, the resistors and the LEDs are optional. Um, one LED is set up to be a, a power LED, so it will display when um, the mega boots up and if everything's okay, it will light up. And then the red LED uh, lights up uh, when you press a button. So when you press a button, it immediately lights up and when you let go and the request has been sent, the LED goes out. Um, so yeah, um, the project itself can support lots of buttons. Um, I've only put three on here, but there you could probably offer Mega run about 40 buttons connected to it if that's what you wanted to do. So how do you go about building one of these? Well, the first thing you're gonna need is obviously uh, the, uh, the boards. Um, the Arduino Mega board, uh, look, the cheapest, I think I found it on AliExpress. Actually, I think I've got the web page here somewhere. Uh, there it is there for $7.85 US uh, with free shipping, as long as you don't mind waiting about four to six weeks. Um, you can pick um, it up here. Uh, this is obviously not an original Arduino. It's a, it's a cheap Chinese copy. But look, to be honest, I've used lots of them and they generally seem to be okay. And the ENC 28J60s, um, this is a pretty typical price for them, um, about $2.50, just under $2.50 uh, shipped. There's a number of different variants here. Um, I generally go with the ones that run at five volts, um, but you can use the 3.3 volts ones as well. In theory, they will work. Um, so that's all you need. And once you've got that, you need to then go and get the Arduino development environment, which you can get from arduino.cc. Um, they have software here, um, which you can download uh, for free. I usually use the zip version here. That way I don't have to have crap all over my PC. I can just put this into a folder and run it. Um, the other thing that you do need to grab is you do need to grab uh, this project here, Arduino underscore UIP. Uh, this is the Ethernet library that you need to use to um, uh, control the, um, uh, the ENC 28J60. Um, and what you do with that is you go into uh, your Arduino folder to the libraries folder and you create a folder here called UIP Internet and you just install all the files that come from that GitHub repository into this directory and that's it, it's installed and it will run. The other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need uh, some Arduino code to run on your mega. Um, now, it's not included in your install. You'll actually have to go into GitHub to grab it out of the XLights repository. Um, in the XLights repository, underneath the X schedule folder, there's a folder called X schedule buttons, and it contains all of uh, the files that you're going to need. Um, you should grab all of these, put them into a folder somewhere on your machine called X schedule buttons, um, and then you can load that up using. Um, uh, the Arduino IDE, um, which looks like this. Um, there's a couple of files here. There's the X schedule buttons file. You should not need to touch this file at all, um, and, and I'd strongly suggest you don't. 
um, and then there's configure.h and this is where you can go and uh, do some configurations. I'll quickly walk you through it. Um, this line here is commented out. If you turn, if you uncomment this line, um, what will happen is the code will send back over a serial connection to your PC, a whole bunch of debug message. Um, I would not suggest you turn it on unless you actually need to do some debugging. If you do do some debugging, this is the serial rate that the data will be sent back at. So you need to make sure you match that up. Uh, this part here is the IP address of your Arduino. Um, now, the Arduino, I believe, by default works on a subnet of 255.255.255.0. So hopefully your, your show subnet looks like that. Um, otherwise, you'll have to change the code. Um, and you just set the octets up in these four bytes here that you want the Arduino to have. Um, the power pin, so this is the pin that you'll attach the LED to if you want to show an LED when the, the power's on. Um, if you don't, uh, you can define this to be any other valid pin if you want. You can move it around. Uh, you don't have to connect the LED, it's not essential. Um, and this is the LED pin that will light up when you press a button. So if you want to uh, have that happen, you should connect it to this pin or you can change it to any other uh, valid digital pin. This is the IP address of the machine that will be running um, the X scheduler. And this is the port that the X scheduler runs on. By default, it's 80, but you may have changed it to 81 or 8080 or some other port, in which case you'll have to update the code here. This is the number of physical buttons that you've got. Um, I, while setting this larger than the number of physical buttons is not the end of the world, um, it will run a little smoother if you set it to be the right number of buttons. Um, and then down here is an array listed in order of the pins that it will look for those buttons connected to. Um, so I've started with pin 22. Uh, pin 22 in this here is actually this pin just here, the second one in on the left here, goes 22, 23, 24, 25, and so on. They're numbered here. Some of the pins aren't numbered very well, and you can find uh, the pinouts online if you need them. Um, if you need to extend this array, if you want more than this number of buttons, you can keep on adding them. Like I say, any valid digital pin uh, can be added onto this array. Um, now, when we refer to them, we refer to this as the first pin, second pin, and so forth, because you'll see that we need to know that in a minute. Okay. Um, when you wire the pins up, now there are some instructions. So also in here is this document here. So here I describe for the Arduino Mega, all of the connections that you need to make from the Mega to um, either power supplies or to the ENC 28J60 or to the LEDs or the buttons themselves. All of the buttons are connected to the pin. So in this case, pin 22 and the other side of it's connected to ground. Um, so up here, the ground is connected to all the buttons. So when the button's pressed, it actually shorts the pin down to ground, um, which is what the Arduino code detects to know that the button's been pressed. Um, also on here is the link off to that uh, ethernet library and so forth. Um, so now the, the, the next thing you need to understand is when the button's pressed, what's gonna happen is it's actually going to try and trigger a button in the scheduler. And if you've seen any of the, the scheduler videos before, you'll know that um, it's possible to um, define your own buttons. And so if we, if we come over here and have a look at our options, um, you can see down here I've defined some buttons. Um, now the names of these are really important. So hide underscore, um, the reason hide underscore is although you can see the button down here on the UI, uh, the next time uh, the scheduler is released, um, I will actually be automatically hiding any button that starts with hide. So they won't be cluttering up your user interface and they also won't clutter up your web interface either. So it's hide underscore Arduino button, uh, the case is important. Um, then underscore one, so this will be the first button, um, which is attached to pin 22 in my example, and it's going to adjust the volume down by 10. And Arduino button two is going to adjust the volume up by 10. But this could be anything you like. So uh, we can go in and add another button. Arduino button 
underscore three and we can come in here and we can say I want that to uh, add a song to um, the playlist uh, so there's a queuing feature inside the scheduler so I want to queue up a song um, and if I remember rightly um, I have to put in my playlist name I don't know, let's call it playlist xx I haven't actually defined this um, and then the song um, the song or the step name it will go there um, and I click OK and now when I press that physical button it will try to uh, run this particular uh, add this particular song onto the queued list of songs to play um, if I wanted to add a mute button I could do that pretty easily Arduino button underscore four and we're gonna sorry we're gonna set uh, the volume to zero so it turns the volume off and we click OK um, now because these buttons are down here um, you can t I can test them and show you what they would look like so you can see that up here where the volumes displayed that as I press the buttons the volume goes up or down or in this case it mutes to zero and so forth um, and the same thing happens when I physically press the button albeit that there's a bit of a lag because obviously the request has to be sent over the network um, to the scheduler so um, that's all there is to it. Um, grab an Arduino, grab an ENC28J60, uh, follow uh, the wiring instructions here. If you're using the Arduino Mega, if you're using an Arduino Nano, then um, these pins will need to be somewhat different. You'll need to change these pins because there's not that many pins on an uh, on Arduino Mega. Um, and these pins here, which are the, the SPI pins, are slightly different on a Nano as well, and you'll need to move them around. But the concept's essentially the same. Uh, wire up some buttons, define your buttons in here, um, and it's all good. Now, if it comes time where you need to troubleshoot it, um, grab a look at the log. Um, you can see here, sorry, the schedule's running. Um, uh, you can see here, okay. So here it was um, receiving commands and in this case uh, it was processing them successfully. That's what you'd expect to see in the log if it was working. Um, if it wasn't working, so if you were sending the command and the button didn't exist, um, you'll get uh, errors like this. So here it's received, Arduino button six, um, but that's an unknown button. And that's because obviously it's named incorrectly. It should say hide underscore. Um, and so it's failed um, with, as an unknown button. Um, so you can just go back in and fix that up. Now in that case there, to be honest, this was an old version of the code and I'd switched it over. So um, that's not gonna happen to you. What might happen is though, if you haven't defined hide button six, um, you get a similar sort of error in your log file. So um, enjoy, guys. Thanks.